Hello, my name is Carlo. I'm going to be talking about a Whole Foods strategy. Whole Foods has a unique strategy to retain uh, and attract new customers that most of its competitors are lacking. Most of the customers that Whole Foods are uh, have nowadays are health conscious and are env environmentally, environmentally uh, concerned. Therefore, they, uh, they care about their food and how it's grown and produced. Um, they have various uh, certifications on their grocery stores that attract uh, a huge number um, of new customers and uh, since they're willing to pay more for organic food. Um, these health, health conscious people are the main uh, target group for uh, Whole Foods since with their high quality standards and other certifications as the uh, uh, CCOF which would be a USDA accredited certifier. Also a big factor that makes Whole Foods so popular among these people is that they do not sell products that violate human rights, labor laws, and, and animal rights. So many people nowadays care about how food is produced and raised, which is one of the biggest factors that influence Whole Foods uh, marketing strategy. Whole Foods principal market are for people that um, people and family who earn um, higher uh, higher um, than the national average in the US. People who purchase uh, food at the Whole Foods usually do not buy other products in Walmart or any other low budget um, grocery store. People spend more since everything that Whole Foods, Whole Foods sell um, is organic and without any uh, artificial flavors. With this strategy, um, Whole Foods can be can potentially start losing customers since there's a large market for uh, people who do not make a lot of money. Also, um, a, a solution that Whole Foods um, is trying to implement is to um, open up a line, which would be for um, low budget people, well, people with low budgets that will sell organic and natural products with the lowest possible price. How are you doing today? Uh, my name is Gaspar Alvarez once again. Today I'm going to be presenting with my teammates Carlo Bianconi and Sebastian Barroso. And today we're going to be presenting over case 7 given by the textbook about Whole Foods. So a little bit of background about the, the industry Whole Foods is being part of. They are part of the grocery store industry, which is one of the largest industries in the United States. Uh, one of its characteristics is that it's a long growth industry with fierce competition and low profit margins. And just so you realize how big the industry is, uh, for the year 2012, the industry recorded over 600 million in sales only. So that's it. Uh, a little bit about the competitors inside the industry. Uh, so we can find, first of all, conventional grocers such as Kroger, Publix, Safeway and Albertsons. Uh, after we can find the super centers which include Walmart and Target. Uh, after that we can find natural grocers. That's where Whole Foods uh, is classified and uh, classified and we can also find Sprouts Farmers Market and the Fresh Market. Uh, lastly we can find wholesalers such as Costco and Sam's Club which offer uh, products are large quantities. Uh, so a couple of characteristics of competition of the competition inside the industry. Uh, this industry is driven by limited growth opportunities and narrow profits for margin, uh, which has forced uh, companies to stay uh, stay smart, stay underground, and be keep innovating over the years, uh, which has led them to have more efficiencies both in purchasing and distribution of their products. And as a result, uh, the, only who, the only outcome of, of this is that customers benefit completely with this because now they have better products at a lower price in a much more efficient way. Uh, however, as a consequence of this, uh, many small competitors have either been acquired by large competitors or simply forced to close as they cannot stay competitive uh, or simply profitable with these lower prices. 
uh, a little bit about the customers inside the, the industry. Uh, customers inside the grocery stores have no strong attachments really with any particular store, uh, except about the natural groceries, but we're gonna talk about that later. But inside the grocery stores industry overall, they have no strong attachments, uh, which uh, makes them a highly conscious uh, customer about the prices and expect better prices or promotions every time. So if a store starts being too expensive or it starts having less promotions, it's very likely that the customer will move on to another store that will offer, offer the same products but at a lower price. Uh, in, an, in an effort to retain these customers, uh, many stores now offer loyalty programs in order to retain their customers. And one of the efficiencies that they've been uh, experimenting these couple of years that has been proven to be very successful is, for example, the self-checkout lines, which uh, reduces the checkout times for the customers and serves as an operational adjustment that benefits the customers, as explained before. A little uh, background also about the natural grocery stores. Uh, during the last 30 years, the natural grocers have grown rapidly inside the grocery store industry. Uh, all of this is explained by the fact that over the last three decades, the demand for health conscious products has increased by consumers who are now much more interested and concerned about the origin and source of their products. This is how uh, Whole Foods has uh, entered the market and has found like a niche, a special target customer. Uh, they target a special customer that is way more health conscious and that actually uh, is interested about the origin of their food. Uh, a statistic that shows this is that as of 2014, 45% of Americans explicitly sought to include organic food in their meals, which is very impressive. And these uh, numbers are expected to increase only. Uh, for the year 2012, uh, natural and organic products uh, represented for about $81 billion in sales inside the U.S., which is an insane amount. Uh, while organic products accounted for $28 billion and are expected to keep increasing during the upcoming years, given the trend that more people nowadays care about the origin of their foods. Uh, so let's talk about, the, uh, about whole foods inside the industry. Whole food growth rates uh, have been outstanding over the last 30 years. Ever since uh, 1990, they've had growth rates over 20% each year consecutive. And they have EBIT, uh, EBIT uh, margins uh, of 9.5%, which is almost double than their competitors, even though their natural grocers still double it. So that's impressive. And even though many competitors now offer more natural and organic products, uh, Whole Foods still remains as the market leader inside the natural groceries industry, and it should stay the same way over the next few years. Uh, the company has achieved this by innovating and offering new features such as sustainability and other char characteristics that are very important to natural and organic customers, uh, such as over 75 food certifications in their in their uh, meats, in their fishes, in everything. Uh, basically, Whole Foods has no processed uh, products with no artificial flavors, only organic and natural products. And that's why their customers prefer them over the other natural grocery stores. Uh, a little bit about the market position. Uh, as said before, uh, they are the number one natural grocery store in the United States, uh, uh, which makes their current market position very attractive positive and a highly profitable one. Uh, they have achieved this, of course, as I said before, by specializing inside the grocery store and finding a niche uh, by selling only natural and organic products. Uh, they do this by targeting the customers that we mentioned before, which are health conscious and environmentally friendly. Uh, by targeting the segment, uh, Whole Food has been able to generate uh, larger profit margins uh, above the market average and achieve a sustainable growth rate over the last three decades, given that they, they charge higher prices for the products too. That's how they have better profit margins and better growth rates than the other competitors in the industry. Um, this uh, this market position uh, and this strategy has been proven to be sustainable over the last 30 years and is most likely to remain this way over the near future. Uh, a little bit more about the market position. Uh, the change in the taste by the American population st seems to protect their market position. It serves like a kind of insurance because customers are 
every every year they keep getting more interested in their in their food origins and this is like contagious it's it's been spreading over the last years and i believe like we can all agree on this so uh, this serves like as uh, an insurance for the market position because maybe more people will switch to natural and organic products which uh, only benefits the company uh, they will most likely remain as the market leader inside the natural grocery stores in the future and should remain highly profitable given their 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 prices compared to the market. Uh, a little bit more about the company that protects their market position. Uh, Amazon just bought them a couple of years ago. And well, we all know Amazon is a massive company with large pockets. So these only protect their financial status inside the industry. So in any case that they need to invest more to be more efficient or to innovate or to protect more more their market position uh, trust me amazon will help them out and they will give them the money without even mentioning that whole foods by themselves they're already amazing and actually a little bit a little bit about their financial status they are a debt free company this is this is unique in the natural grocery stores and in the grocery store industry itself nobody's debt free but whole foods so this only serves as an insurance and it's amazing so that's it. I'm going to leave you now with my teammates. and um, Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Sebastian Barroso. And today I'm going to talk to you about questions four and five on our case study of Whole Foods. Um, our question four is, what do the financial ratios tell you about the past operate, operating performance of Whole Foods? And how informative are these um, historical ratios um, for the projected performance? Um, for these questions, we're going to take a look to the to Whole Foods um, ratios and financial statements and got into into deep in order to realize how well have have, have they performed so far and if uh, this is a sustainable in the future and if the uh, the forecast for 2014 and 2015 were ac accurate enough or were attainable or enough or not um, the first thing we're going to look at is the EBITDA or earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. Um, this is basically a profitability ratio or profitability measure. Um, this ratio will tell us uh, how much profit or earnings does a company make um, without taking into account capital investments, uh, uh, debts, or um, depreciation or some of the other operating um, uh, expenses. Uh, for this reason, these ratios sometimes can be somehow misleading, but it's just a measure of how much profit or money a company makes. In a Whole Foods case, um, we can see they have been able to uh, to increase revenue and earnings every single year. They've uh, uh, they have performed. We got that in 2011, they made 159 million, um, 1,055 million, and in 2012, 1,222 million for 2013. As we can see, they have been increasing these, these numbers every single year, and it's forecasted to keep the same trend for 2014 and um, 2015. And by looking at these ratios, we can say that. Um, this industry wasn't as developed as it is nowadays in 2011 or 2013 and today there's much more competition um, but about, by that time uh, Whole Foods was one of the so lively leaders and it's still it is a leader nowadays in the organic market but um, this demonstrates that its EBITDA uh, was the leading company at the moment and still it is nowadays, nowadays. but um, it had it had really good performance um, for that year span. Now uh, we can take a look into the EBITDA margin. It's the same idea or concept of EBITDA, but um, as a percentage of revenue in order to uh, be able to compare this to other companies. Um, by looking at, uh, at the EBITDA margin of, of Whole Foods uh, for, for the three, those three years, it is uh, 8.5% in 2011, 9% in 2012, and 9.5% in 2013. Um, it kept a consistent level 
um, in comparison to the revenue, which is positive, we've been constant in being able to deliver profits and revenue. Um, and the other good things we can we can see uh, with these ratios is that um, comparing to the competitors at the time, Whole Foods um, was the leading leader in the industry. Uh, Whole Foods was uh, growing at a faster rate than other competitors at the moment, or even other not not even just in the organic uh, area, but in the whole whole supermarket industry. Yeah, it was a, a brand new company. More opportunities to grow in the in the in the short run compared to companies that have been there for a long time. But they they had really good numbers for those years. Um, the there's it is also imperative to remember that um, the organic food market uh, has gained a lot of popularity, and um, the whole food markets took an innovative approach. That's why they even were um, bought by Amazon, and they they have been performing really good, and their numbers look really good for 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 their margin so far. Now we're gonna take a look to current asset turnover. Um, was pretty constant for the same three year period as a seven. Uh, uh, it has a seven for 2011, 5.6 in 2012, and. 6.5 for 2013. Let's remember that current asset turnover uh, measures uh, the value or the the of revenue and sales of a company relative to its assets. Um, it's basically the the ability that a company has to create sales or generate revenue uh, with its existing assets. Um, a seven of uh, around six. Let's say it's the average. It's a really good number. It indicates that the uh, that these assets are used to generate basically six times of its value in revenue, which is positive. And they, they, um, the forecast uh, aims to improve it a little bit more in comparison to 2013 and get a good level. Might be attainable. Um, for current liabilities, turnover is basically the ability that a company has to pay its um, most current liabilities. The forecast uh, aims to improve it a little bit more in comparison to 2013 and get a good level might be attainable um, for current liability store over is basically the ability that a company has to pay its um, most current liabilities those are due within a year um, for the past three years it had a really stable and positive number because at 10.5 for 2011 10.9 for 2012 and 10.7 for 2000 13 really good number um it's forecasted to keep it at the same level attainable another important thing too that we must uh must remember is that uh these this company is one of the of those i mean for to be growing such a fast rate uh you would expect that a company has a much more a, a high level of debt but in reality they don't have much uh, much debt at all, which is really positive for them since they've been able to grow by their own earnings and not incurring debt expenses, which, which is really positive. Um, net property plan and, um, and equipment, uh, it has been growing uh, really steadily and at a fast rate. Um, it grew a, it grew a 9% in 2012 and then it 10.7%. And it's uh, forecasted to grow at 10.4 in 2014 and 12.6 for 2015. And a good thing to mention here is the, the level of property plan and equipment per store. It's been kept at the same level every single year, which is positive, which means they're trying to maintain the quality of their, of their operations and of all their uh, products and the stores, which is really positive. Um, the depreciation and uh, the annual depreciation and amortization it's been kept at the same level nothing further another important uh, financial not ratio but uh, let's say coefficient uh, the be the be beta coefficient uh, it's at 0.7 let's remember that this uh, measures how risky or how volatile uh, a company is um, relative to the market anything below one it's going to be less volatile or risky than the market and they are standing at 0.7 that's really good 
which means that investors will uh, have uh, we won't complain won't be afraid to keep investing in the company and we feel that their money is safe in Home Foods hands which is really positive it's, and it's really good after taking a look to all these ratios what I could say is that um, they are not showing any signs to slow down and they're being ha they had really successful years without any uh, any signs to to uh, worsen their their performance but even though after saying this let's remember that uh, these past performance ratios can just give us uh, an idea of what what uh, it's basically a historic trend how they perform uh, on ba basing or the future just on the ratios it's not the best thing to do they're really good uh, base or a really good uh, they give us a really good idea of what they can do but it's not any it's not something definite at all but even though it's their performance was impressive and it should give us uh, give them a space to to keep attaining success now for question five um, we're gonna take a look to the financial assumptions uh, how how important are each of the underlying financial assumptions in the ROA forecast? Um, and what assumptions play the biggest role in driving the anticipated improvements in ROA? Um, in order to do this, we're going to calculate our, uh, our, our ROA um, with our two-point analysis. It's basically, uh, we're going to try to divide profit margin times asset turnover. That would be net income divided by sales times sales divided by assets. sales divided by assets um, by doing this we obtain really interesting numbers um, for each year uh, a point 99 a point 0.99 for 2011 uh, point uh, 106 for 2012 uh, 0.123 for 2013 and is forecasted to grow up a little bit in the incoming years what is uh, would be awesome to, to show how uh, these numbers to see how they're moving, but um, for any time that profit margin, uh, let's remember this is profit margin times asset turnover. Any time that profit margin changes um, a little bit, uh, it's there is a bigger impact in the in ROA. This is big. This is more, more like most likely because um, in this case, this number is gonna be uh, lower. It's gonna be a decimal. It makes mathematical sense because uh, if this number changes by a little bit, it's gonna have a larger impact because the other, it's, it's gonna be a full number. This happens because the second number, asset turnover, it's just sales divided by assets. It's gonna keep us a, a whole number, not just a decimal. And for that reason, I would say that net income is the one that plays a bigger role and its growth, uh, as long as it grows faster, it's gonna, ROA, it's gonna be better, uh, has a better image every single year. But um, every single one of these components, it's, it's crucial, I would say, even though that the profit margin, it's, it's gonna be, and more, more in, in Whole Foods case. Um, because they, they do not incur any debt and and uh, their assets are being depreciated at a fixed rate uh, at a fixed rate every single year so they're not going to change by a large mar margin or they shouldn't um, and it's going to be proportionate to sales so for that reason I would say that the profit margin uh, has a larger impact and has a bigger role um it is also important to say that um that asset turnover it's has been held fairly constant for for each of the years and it is it is also important to know that the forecasted uh, ROAs for 2014 and 2015 um are 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 based on on the past performance as we said before and these are not definite but we we do believe that they should be able to attain it if they're able to grow as fast as they've been doing not even as fast but if they're able to keep opening stores sales are gonna come and sales should should keep coming in and improving um 
even though that these uh, forecasted ROAs might be attainable, they might also be too optimistic at some points. They're expecting to open uh, a 10% of store at least every single year, which is a lot in my opinion. But if they're able to do so, there's no doubt that these numbers are attainable and they might even be better. Um, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy. Yes, we do believe that the financial assumptions in the forecast are obtainable yet optimistic since every company who has had their boom um, ends up stabilizing at the end. Historical growth rates and EBITDA portrays that the company has had very successful years in the past, which would indicate that opening more stores would be an easy task for them since organic foods were at an all-time high. Apart from these rates, we also believe and appreciate how um, Whole Foods is the only company that is so comp the, from its competitors that has zero debt and is the less risky from them all, according to, to its beta. Gaining popularity among the organic food market also makes it the biggest company in the sector uh, by a far stretch. Still, we feel it is optimistic uh, but attainable since Whole Foods has 362 stores in uh, 2013 and it's forecasted to open 38 new stores, um, which would end up uh, with 400 in its respective year. In 2015, it is forecasted that it would open 50 more stores, with a new total of 450 by the end of 2015. Nevertheless, um, if Whole Foods managed to invest heavily in these new stores, we feel that it will manage properly every, uh, it will manage properly every store it has. Um, the forecasted year of on year growth rate uh, per sale is 2000, in 2014 is at a low of 0.5%, which would pose a problem due to many stores opening up. It would bounce back uh, up in 2015 um, with a 1.3%. Um, but we think that um, that uh, Whole Foods should do is. Um, lower the number of stores by 25% so the sales to stores would be more realistic at the end.